My coverage of Computex 2017 is brought to you by MSI, EVGA, Tesoro, G-Skill, and Cooler Master. So guys, I'm over at the ASUS booth now. I gotta come here every year because they always have so much awesome stuff. Uh, basically, I'm in their, their kind of finished goods area right here. It's very clean, very white, very pretty. But back through that darkened doorway over there is the ROG area. And, and Jennifer described this area as, it's kind of like they got the business up front, the party in the back. So let's go back and check out where the party's at. Let's start up with some X299 motherboards here at the ASUS booth. Uh, this is not part of the ROG lineup. This is from the Prime lineup, which is a bit more mainstream when it comes to ASUS's offerings. You're probably at least a little bit familiar with how they line things up. From the Prime series, we have a couple boards, uh, the X X299 Prime Dash A, as well as the X299 uh, Prime Deluxe. And the Deluxe is probably going to be the one that comes out first, and that's what we're looking at right here. So you're going to see uh, all, eight all the full complement of eight DIMM slots. Uh, they've also got a U.2 that's down here towards the bottom. Uh, we also have like all the stuff you would expect on a deluxe board. Surface mounted power reset, debug LED, all of that good stuff. This is of course going to be compatible with ASUS 5-way optimization, so the automatic overclocking functions that you can just plug in. Uh, and then we've got a couple M.2 slots. One is act uh, or well, passively cooled at least by the uh, heat sink, which is right down here. There's another vertical one that's right in here, which is a great way to install it because you get plenty of airflow going over the top of that. Uh, I like what they've done with the design here. Uh, it's pretty much sticking with the black and white aesthetic with some uh, gray and silver accents. And of course, this also is going to feature RGB LED lighting. Before I show you the X299-A, here's the Hyper M.2 by 16 card. This can be an add-on. Uh, it's not, it doesn't come with any of these boards, but basically, Asus said that they have ran like up to 20 M.2 devices in the same system. Uh, with this card, you can actually slot in four M.2 devices on there. Uh, they said there's a hardware controller on there to assist with connecting the devices. I don't believe it's a RAID controller, but they said uh, you kind of you, you lose the scaling up of uh, the speed after about 12 drives. But hey, if you don't have enough M.2 or U.2 on these boards by default, then uh, you can add them on with the Hyper M.2 by 16 card. Here is a look at the ASUS Prime X299-A. So this is going to look very similar to the X299 Deluxe. It's not going to come with the same accessory kit like the Deluxe. It's going to give you the Thunderbolt card as well as the fan extension. This one doesn't come with that, so the price is going to be a little bit less. You're still going to get a very similar configuration when it comes to power delivery, as well as connectivity for M.2, as well as, of course, that heat sink, which is going to help keep those M devices, M.2 devices nice and cool. So if the Deluxe is a little bit out of your price range, then the Prime is probably going to be a little bit more suited to you. This is, probably isn't going to be the most expensive X299 board from the ones that Asus is launching, though. That one would be the top. So here's the Tough X299 Mark II. This is uh, the slightly more cut down version of the Tough, and this one's probably going to be the most affordable X299 motherboard from the ASUS stable of boards, at least, that they're coming out with right at launch here. So you're going to have the, the, basically all the Tough identifying features that you might uh, expect. You know, it's got uh, a very rugged, durable aesthetic. It got the Tough logo. I mean, that always looks good. It doesn't make anything faster, but you know, stylish. Just keeping, keeping things stylish is always nice. You got a single M.2 right here. Uh, and then you got an additional vertical M.2 that is up to date. Uh, we also have some steel, re steel reinforced slots. Uh, but if you want to go really hardcore with the Tough, you want the Mark I, which is down here. So here's the Tough X299 Mark I. Uh, this one has thermal armor, as Asus has been doing with a lot of their Tough series boards. Uh, up around the PCI, I mean, up around the I.O. up here, as well as some additional stuff going on up in there. What is this? There's a button. Uh, I wonder what, wonder what that button does. It says, Mem oh, that's the MemOK okay button. That's so you can still press the MemOK okay button, which is used for making sure that your memory compatibility is there. If you ever have pro problems uh, just getting your system up and running due to a memory issue, the MemOK okay button is very helpful for that. Uh, you do get the USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connector on this one, right in there. Very nice to have that. Uh, it is Gen 2, so you get the full complement, of, or full bandwidth that's available. Uh, with Gen 2, and that's super nice for connecting external devices. So you got also the uh, slotted in thermal armor here to protect dust from getting into the cracks. And then you also have a bit of active cooling here. There is a fan here for the chipset, as well as again an M.2 uh, device that you can connect right down here. So keep everything nice and cool by keeping it under the thermal armor. And then back here on the I.O., tons of connectivity again, USB, USB 3.1 Gen 2, Type-C there as well. So uh, plug, in, plug in all your external devices right there. 
You do get a, a bit of lighting here on the Tough Mark One as well. You can see on the Ultimate Force logo right there. Uh, that's that's kind of new for the Tough series. That's not something that's been there before. But um, you know, if you're not into RGB lighting and you want something that's completely low profile, ASUS does always do a good job of allowing you to turn off the LEDs in the UEFI uh, or using their software. Let's, let's just go right to the top end next, guys. This is the RG Rampage 9 Extreme. X299 in the top end trim from ASUS. So uh, what can be said here? Uh, first off, with the, let's talk aesthetics first. Uh, they have added some translucent covers over the armor. Uh, so up on the I.O. as well as down here on this uh, extra armor that they've put here around all the PCI Express expansion slots. Just really cool look from the LEDs down here, kind of just softly flowing over the texture they put. Uh, does the same thing on the top left as well as down towards the bottom. Nice big RG logo there as well. All RGB support and control. And um, this one is just, uh, this one is just, it's got, it's got the extra stuff that you wouldn't expect to see. So there in the top right is what they're calling DIM.2, which is an M.2 riser, riser card that uh, slots into a dual inline memory module sock, er, slot. So you don't plug memory in there, you plug this little card, now that allows you to mount an M.2 to that. Give yourself an, M, an extra M.2, put it in a position where it uh, will potentially be getting some active cooling, especially if you're using an air cooler on the CPU, or just a position that uh, takes a little bit further away from the uh, heat contamination of other components like graphics cards and that kind of thing. Uh, next to that, you're going to see all the uh, connectivity points for monitoring voltage. Uh, there's some dip switches for doing things like turning off PCIe lanes. Uh, all of the really high-end stuff that they put on the extreme boards just to make sure that you can go maximum overclocking. Accessory-wise, this is actually going to come with a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, expansion card. Uh, it's just a PCIe expansion card, so that's really nice to have. There's a little bracket that you can also use that's just going to connect to your PCI Express expansion slots to provide some GPU support. So if you have a large, heavy GPU, you shouldn't get as much sag or hopefully minimal sag with that. And this one even comes with integrated Wi-Fi. Uh, not 802.11ac, 802.11ad, the new standard for Wi-Fi, uh, which gives you uh, up to 4.2 gigabits per second of available bandwidth, which is just crazy. So there it is, the Rampage 9 Extreme X299, and probably it's going to be very expensive, but you know, it's a flagship board, so that's how it goes. All right, let's round out the X299 boards before we move over to the AMD X399 board that they have here behind me. This is the ROG Strix X299e Gaming. If the Rampage 9 Extreme is a little bit too rich for your blood, if it has a little bit too many effects, if you're looking for something that is, of course, gaming aesthetic, gamer grade, uh, with all the features that you would uh, want in a gaming motherboard, the ROG Strix series has been doing that for quite a while. So RGB LEDs, of course, uh, you can't go wrong there. At least uh, I like ASUS implementation of these. Okay, let me turn that down so you can actually see that. It's got the uh, RG backlit logo. It's, it's kind of like 3D in there, which, which looks pretty cool. Uh, and that little accent here up on the IO as well. Pretty minimal. Uh, they, it seems like they've actually toned it down a little bit from uh, some of the X270 or Z270 boards that we've seen. In fact, there's no RGB down here towards the bottom. These are, of course, going to still have RGB headers on them, so you can connect up devices if you want to. Uh, and they're now including support for individually addressable LED strips. So the LED strips, uh, like you might be familiar with, like NZXT has. Um, I mean, obviously, those, I'm not saying those are compatible, but they can individually address each LED to give you a crawl effect or just allow you to do more than just uh, the basic setup of here's an LED strip that's a single color, uh, which is an awesome thing to be able to do. Uh, so I'm glad that ASUS is including that. I'm imagining you're going to have specialized LED strips that will be compatible with that. Um, but anyway, beyond that, you have, again, a uh, pretty full-featured board here. Uh, LGA 20, 2066 socket, eight DIMM slots, some steel reinforced PCI Express expansion slots. You do have a debug LED header down there on the bottom. Uh, and you can see, for instance, uh, RGB header right there. That's pretty standard. Uh, and then I believe this is the special RGB header right there as well. That's individually addressable. Um, you don't have surface mounted power and reset buttons on this board, so do keep that in mind. However, they have continued to give you tons of support for uh, uh, high-speed SSDs, NVMe SSDs with M.2 right up here, as well as another M.2 that's going to be down here uh, below the chipset heatsink. And then finally, again, 
You've uh, maintaining the connectivity for front panel USB 3.1 Gen 2 with that connector that uh, Asus was uh, one of the ones who originally helped to develop. So I'm like I'm liking to see that on pretty much all the boards we've seen here. All right, guys. All right, here it is. I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, I just I just went through all the X299 boards, but I'll be honest. I'm almost a little bit more excited about this, really because it's my first X399, X, X399 board. This is a thread ripper board. It's for AMD's new line of high-end desktop processors. They just have recently been announcing and teasing. And uh, I mean, it, all right, so I should tell you what it's called. This is the ROG Zenith Extreme. So uh, whereas before we've had well, like Crosshair, that's been the name for like most of the AMD boards, we now have Zenith. And it is the extreme, so I don't know if they're going to have like a, you know, a formula or probably not an impact. I doubt we'll see an impact version of this board, but who knows? Asus has done crazier things in the past, so uh, we'll leave it to that. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, there's so many limited specs that I can tell you about this board so far, but we do have quad channel DDR4 memory supports. Uh, AMD has just released a little bit of more information about Threadripper. The CPUs are supposed to have 64 PCI Express lanes. We're not show, sure how they're going to be configured, whether there's going to be any limitations as far as restrictions, I think, restrictions or anything like that, but 64 PCIe lanes. Considering that Intel has taken like their 8-core part and dropped it down to 28 PCIe lanes, 64 on every Threadripper part. So that means tons of connected, like you can get full complements of uh, PCI Express lanes for all four PCI Express expansion, expansion slots down there if you want. Uh, so four-way Quadro support, that kind of thing. Uh, if you want to set up a massive rendering system. Uh, it's, it seems like it's poised to uh, have a pretty big impact on the high-end desktop market. Uh, ASUS has, has told us again, you are going to get the 10 gigabit ethernet card with this board as well. So that's nice to have. Beyond that, again, there's not a, just a ton of stuff I can tell you about this because AMD has still been holding it pretty close to their, their chest as far as additional specs. You can see a couple 8-pin supplemental CPU power connectors up there, though. Uh, we have surface amount of power reset. I'm imagining they're going to have a ton of stuff over here for overclocking. We have no idea what overclocking is going to be like with Threadripper. With uh, 16 cores and 32 threads, though, you know, uh, I'm, it might be limited. Who knows? But, uh, of course, we're seeing U.2, that USB, again, 3.1 Gen 2 uh, connector right there. And uh, just a really nice, clean-looking board with a little bit of RGB lighting uh, from Asus. So it's, it's cool that they have this out here. Uh, I really hope we see Threadripper come to the public very soon. All right, guys, let's move over to monitors. This is the ROG Swift PG35VQ, and I want it. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with my setup at home, I have an Acer Predator X34, which is a 34-inch G-Sync panel. This is like uh, the step up from that, and uh, I have no idea if there, uh, there's probably going to be other vendors that also have this size and resolution, but 35 inch ultra wide QHD is what they call it. 3440 by 1440, that's the resolution though, 21 by 9. Uh, and you have uh, DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0 as far as being able to connect this. Uh, it has a frameless curved design. Um, frameless is subjective in my personal opinion, but it is definitely curved. HDR support, 512 zone LED backlight, which means you're going to have excellent uh, black reproduction, 1,000 candles per square meter peak brightness for really, really high contrast ratio, and NVIDIA G-Sync support with up to 200 hertz refresh rate. Oh my god. So big, widescreen, awesome resolution for gaming, G-Sync support, quantum dot technology as well, so that increases the uh, color gamut that's available up to DCI P3. Uh, and it even has illuminated LEDs, uh, the RG logo that's projected down onto the bottom, as well as a really cool uh, RGB LED des design across the back of the monitor, which you can either just have set up to look cool, or you know, it can even project back against the wall behind the monitor a little bit for a really cool look for your gaming setup. Now, Asus also wanted to point out that they're making a new push into FreeSync monitors. So uh, if you saw the PG series, we now have the XG series. The PG series is going to have G-Sync. The XG series is going to have FreeSync, so it would be a very, very nice uh, monitor, I imagine, I hope, to combine with one of AMD's new Vega GPUs, at least if they ever get around to launching the gaming versions of those. This one in particular is the XG32VQ, 31.5 inch uh, widescreen monitor, 178 degree viewing angle since it is uh, IPS 
This one has a 144 hertz refresh rate and of course variable uh, refresh technology with adaptive sync or free sync. So you're going to get tear free, smooth, buttery gameplay. Uh, whether you're pairing this up with uh, maybe an RX 580 if you want something that's available now uh, or of course Vega once that's available. And finally here is an RG Strix notebook. Right? RG Strix notebook? What do you guys think of it? Uh, you're probably going to be more interested as to what is inside this RG Strix notebook. It is the first ever Ryzen notebook and uh, Asus has managed to wedge a uh, R7 1708 core processor in here as well as an AMD RX 580. It is a 4 gig RX uh, 580, uh, but this is going to be available for between uh, $1,300 and $1,500, depending on what configuration you get with like SSD support and memory and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they said they're also going to be doing a uh, R5 1600 version of this as well. So for those of you guys who've been looking for AMD to get back into a viable option in the notebook category, this appears to be the beginning. I thought it was going to come with the uh, Ryzen 3 CPUs, but uh, it's great to be, see them able to fit something like an R7 1700 with that many cores in something that is relatively thin. I mean, it's, it's not the smallest notebook you've ever seen, but it is definitely portable. And uh, with all those cores in there, that'd be very nice and powerful too. Uh, be a great, great road editing system, I would imagine. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage of the ASUS booth here at Computex 2017. I want to say a huge thank you to my sponsors for my coverage this year. One more time, of course, G-Skill, MSI, EVGA, Cooler Master, and Tesoro. If you guys want to see more videos, then hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, hit the like button. I'll be back with more from Taipei, Taiwan. Ta Taipei, Taiwan. We'll see you guys soon.